Welcome back. All right, so another Saturday night of hockey is finished. And of course, power rankings will be up after I'm done this video. Uh, that being said, we have 11 games to get to from tonight. The first three games I've already done the review for. That video is already on the channel. Go check that out if you haven't already. That being said, we're going to start things off looking at Toronto and Boston. I, I honestly, I'm going to be honest, I thought Toronto was going to win this, and then they didn't. So it's Stolarz versus Swayman. We get a power play for Boston. That's killed off. Seven minutes into the game, shots are 4 nothing Boston. So Toronto starts slow. Uh, Kepke has a wraparound that's saved, and the shots are up to 9 nothing for Boston with 9.5 minutes left. Leaves draw a power play. That becomes a 5-on-3. Uh, Boston does kill that off. There are four total shots for Toronto uh, with those power plays. Beecher then has a rush chance that's held. We get some pushing. It's scoreless after the first. Second period, 35 seconds in. Nyes wires one from the slot. Matthews and Marner with the assists. So the Leafs get the all-important first goal. But then power play for Boston. And they score on it to tie the game. Pasternak from Marshawn and Zaka at 2 minutes and 57 seconds. Leafs look to respond. Shots are 6-4 to four, Toronto at 5.5 minutes. We get two minutes of four on four, and during said four on four at 7.44, uh, Riley scores from Marner. Uh, then there's a four minute Bruins power play that gets killed off. Three shots altogether in those four minutes for Boston. But at 12.38, Boston does score to tie the game. It's Brazo from Frederick and Poitra. And then at 13.14, Kastelik tips one in close. Kastelik scoring a bunch of goals this year. Uh, Beecher and Kepke with the assists. It's like the bottom six for Boston are dragging this team. Uh, the Leafs press. They end up with a power play with 12.9 seconds left. So coming out of the second period, the score is 3-2 for Boston. Uh, to start the third, the Bruins do finish that kill. The Leafs press at three minutes. The shots are only one apiece, four and a half minutes in. A net feed to Tavares gets picked off. We get a power play for Boston. That's killed off. Uh, Poitras denied on a breakaway. There's a glove save on a Matthews rush chance. And then with 2.05 left, the Leafs call a timeout. Uh, with the goalie pulled, Matthews tips one in close at 18.43. Marner and Tavares with the assists. So that ties the game at three. We're going to overtime. The overtime, the Leafs controlled early. Uh, Domi gets denied on a net drive. Marner has a shot that's held. Uh, Coyle has a net drive that's blocked. Matthews steals. Then Boston gets the puck back. And Marshawn gets his first goal of the season from Pasternak at 226. Boston wins 4-3 to in overtime. And both of these teams are 4-4-1. and And it feels like half the league has a record of 4-4-1. and Looking at that, putting together the power rankings for tonight, I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun because there's so many teams with the same record. Uh, your three stars are Marshawn, Matthews, and Kastelik. Shots on that, 10-5 Boston in the first, 12-11 Boston in the second, 10-6 Boston in the third, 2-1 Boston in the overtime, including the shot that matters. Final shots, 34-23 Boston. Power plays, Toronto 0 for 3, Boston 1 for 5. The hits, 27-20 to Toronto. Stolars, 30 saves on 34 shots. Swayman saved 20 out of 23 at the other end. So, Boston gets the win. They get back to a 500 record, at least NHL 500. St. Louis and Montreal. So, it's Bennington versus Montembeau. The Habs had the early jump. Uh, they press at two and a half minutes. Six minutes into the game, the shots are three to one in favor of Montreal. We get a power play for the Blues. That's killed off without a single shot on net. And then the Habs rush, and they score. Evans buries one on a two-on-one. Armia and Savard with the assists at 8.33. one nothing Montreal. Blues press with nine and a half minutes left. The Habs have a three-on-two that gets defended. The Blues rush the other way. A net feed to Suzuki's picked off. We have a power play for Montreal. That's killed off. The Blues press in the final minute, but it's one nothing Montreal after the first. Second period. The Habs have an early press, and they score on it. Uh, Doc buries a rebound in close. Suzuki and Matheson with the assists at 1-12, but St. Louis answers right away. At 1-33, uh, Pareko buries a loose puck on the doorstep. Matthew Joseph and Suter with the assists there, so it's 2-1. Uh, but Janavich is then denied on a rush before, at 4 minutes and 2 seconds, Jake Neighbors scores from... Sod and Shen. Uh, the shots are six to two or six to four, I should say, for the Blues at six and a half minutes. The Habs press at seven minutes. There's some momentum for Montreal. We get a power play for the Habs. That's killed off. Uh, heavy press by Montreal with eight minutes left. The Habs go back to the power play and they score on it. New hook scores from Doc and Matheson at 14.04. So after two periods of play, it's three to two in favor of the Montreal Canadiens. Third period, we have a power play for the Blues. Falk has a blast that's held. That power play's killed off. The shots are 5-0 for St. Louis, four and a half minutes in. 
but Caulfield would add one for Montreal. He scores from Suzuki and Hudson at 519. The Blues press at nine minutes. There's a power play for the Blues. That's killed off. Goalie pull happens with four minutes left because they're down by two. And that gives Armia the empty netter from Dvorak and Evans at 16-49. Your final score in this one, 5-2 <clears throat> for Montreal. They go to 3-4-1 and one in the season. And St. Louis drops to 5-4. and four. Your three stars are Doc, Evans, and... Or Doc, Savard, and Evans. Shots on net, 8-6 Montreal in the first. 14-11 St. Louis in the second. 11-7 St. Louis in the third. Final shots, 31-26 in favor of St. Louis. The power plays 0 for 3 for the Blues, 1 for 3 for Montreal. The hits 24 to 18 for Montreal. Bennington 21 saves on 25 shots. Montembo, nice bounce back. He's had a rough record lately, but uh, 29 saves on 31 shots will bring that safe percentage back up above the 9-10 mark, and that's a pretty good run for him. All right, uh, next up, Washington and Tampa. Tampa Bay kind of played Washington's game tonight. So it's Lindgren versus Vasilevsky. There's an early press by Tampa. The shots are 3-1 to one for the Caps three minutes in. Caps press at five and a half minutes. Duhame has a rush chance that's held. Shots are 7-4 to four for Washington with nine and a half minutes left. So Vasilevsky with a nice bounce back game of his own. Uh, he's had his recent struggles. Geeky fires one wide on a rush. The Bolts press with four minutes left with 122 left. Washington gets a power play. So it's scoreless after one. A lot of low-scoring games, relatively speaking, tonight, comparatively speaking with other nights I've watched hockey. So it's scoreless after one. In the second period early on, the Bolts finish the kill, but the shots are 5-1 to one Washington, two and a half minutes in. Bolts press at three and a half minutes. Eventually they score. Uh, Chafee buries one from the right circle during a press by Tampa. Uh, Paul and Acemont with the assists at 527. Tampa Bay presses after that. They're kept to the outside. There's a post for Dubois from the left circle. Uh, Caps press with seven minutes left. Things are pushy behind the beside the Bolts net, and Bolts come out of that with a power play. That was killed off. One shot on net. It's 1-0 Tampa Bay after two. Third period, the Bolts press at a minute and a half, and Point would score at 226 from Kucherov. Nice cross-crease pass, and in. It's 2-0 for Tampa Bay. Uh, Cavs look to respond, but at 3-10, Geeky gets his first NHL goal from Sorelli and Hagel. That makes it 3-0 and puts this out of reach for Washington, really. Uh, Mangiapane and Lilleberg are a bit unfriendly. Nobody goes to the box there. I thought that was great. I was like, fine. They punched each other a few times. Just why send them to the box? Uh, so the Caps press at eight and a half minutes. Things are pushed in a hold by Vasilevsky. Caps come out of that with a power play. And that lasts 20 seconds before it becomes a four on four. Everything's killed off there. The Caps press with six minutes left, looking to get that goose egg off the board. But with 139 left, Tampa Bay gets a power play which ensures the Tony the Tiger Magnet goes on the board. Tampa Bay wins 3-0. Uh, they go to 5-3 and three with the win. The Capitals drop to 5-2 and two with the loss. Your three stars are Vasilevsky, Geeky, and Chafee. Shots on net, 8-7 Washington in the first, 17-8 Washington in the second, 7-6 Washington in the third. They outshoot Tampa Bay, 32-21. Power plays, Washington 0-2, Tampa Bay 0-3. The hits, 30-12 for Washington. Lindgren saves 18 out of 21. Vasilevsky, 32 saves for the shutout. That'll bring the save percentage up, won't it? All right, next up. Last one on this board is Anaheim and the Rangers. And you, you know what? I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm really happy with how Anaheim's been playing early this season. There's a lot of heart there. They just don't have the finish. If they can figure out the finish, they, they might end up with a half-decent record this year. So it's Dostel versus Quick, and another fan base gets to see how well Dostel's playing. This is why when I kept hearing about, oh, well, John Gibson's the starter for the Ducks. Nope. Uh, so Kreider's denied and close in that first minute. Uh, there's a stick save and out on Fowler. Uh, Rangers press at two and a half minutes. The shots are three to two New York, five minutes in. We get a power play for the Rangers, and there's a shorthanded rush by Ryan Strom that ends that. Four shots on net for the Rangers. Just Dostal saying, eh, I'm not going to allow that one. Uh, Ducks press with five minutes left. Lacombe fires one wide. The Rangers clear. Rangers press in the final minute, and really, the first period, Dostal was awesome. 18 saves. Nothing else to add. 0-0 zero, zero score after the first. Second period. Uh, Trocek's denied from the slot. Lacombe has a wraparound chance that saved. Shots are 3-2 to two Rangers three minutes in. Uh, Terry misses one high on a net drive. The Rangers press at four minutes. We get more pressure by the Rangers at eight and a half minutes. 
Ducks are dangerous in transition. So when they get the puck and they get it out, they're they're dangerous out there. Just not that finish. It's the finish they don't quite have yet. Uh, power play for Anaheim. That's killed off. Panarin fires a buzzer beater wide. It stays 0-0 after the second period. Third period, each team with an early press. The goalies are the story at this point. The shots are two apiece four minutes in. And then finally, we have some goals. At four minutes and 13 seconds, Lindgren wires one from the slot on a great pass from, I believe it was Panarin that had the primary assist. But either way, Lafreniere and Panarin with the assists. And so Ryan Lindgren wearing the fishbowl, and he gets a goal that way. Uh, Rangers score, was it offside? Yes, no goal. Uh, Ducks look to tie it, and then the Rangers score again, but was this one kicked in? They review it, and they decide, no, it's a good goal. So Cooley gets this goal from Kako and Heedle at 1153. Uh, we get two minutes of four on four. During said four on four, the Ducks break the shutout. It is Zellweger. Uh, tipping one in on a rush. Carlson and Terry with the assists at 12.38. Makes it a 2-1 score. Uh, goalie pull happens with two minutes left. With 21.8 seconds left, the Rangers guilty of an icing. The Rangers do hold on, but again, and I had to put it up on the board. Great game, I thought, by the Ducks. Uh, the Ducks dropped to 3-3-1 with the 2-1 loss. Uh, the Rangers 6-1-1 one one with the victory. Your three stars are Quick, Cooley, and Dostal. Shots on that 18 to 7 Rangers in the first, 15 to 8 Anaheim in the second, and 11 to 6 Anaheim in the third. They actually end up shoot, out shooting the Rangers 33 to 32. Power plays, both teams go 0 for 1. The hits 26 to 19 for the Rangers. Dostal, another good night, 30, 30 saves on 32 shots. Quick save 32 out of 33. So nice goaltending duel, and now it's time to change boards. All right, Winnipeg and Calgary. So this was Comrie at one end, Wolf at the other, and on their first shot, Calgary scores at 27 seconds. Uh, after Comrie fails to cover the puck, Backlund buries it. Ball and Zeri with the assist there. It's 1-0 Calgary early. The fans are into it. Flames look for another, but we get a power play for Winnipeg, and they score on it. Ehlers uh, puts one in. It goes actually in off Rasmus Sanderson, and it takes six seconds. Uh, Connor and Morrissey with the assists at 151. That ties the game at one. Shots are two apiece at five minutes. The teams exchange rushes. The Flames press at nine and a half minutes. They're kept to the outside. With 350 left, the Flames get a power play. However, the Jets score on it. Uh, Connor via two on one scores from Lowry and Pionk at 1737. Coleman was upset on the play. I think he thought he was interfered with, but they were both allowed to be at that part of the ice. So I, I also think the upset was probably that, you know, they get a power play and they'll have a shorthanded goal. And Coleman's a, a passionate guy, so yeah, no problem there. Jets finish the kill. They clear the puck after that. 45.9 seconds left. The Flames go back to the power play. So it's 2-1 to one Winnipeg after one. To start the second period, the Jets finish the kill. Then there's a press by Winnipeg at three and a half minutes. Zary has a net drive that gets blocked. Uh, shots are four to three for the Flames at seven and a half minutes. The Flames press at eight minutes. We get a power play for Calgary. That becomes 24 seconds of 5-on-3. And the Jets kill that off. Key moment there when you kill off a 5-on-3. Morrissey's dinged on a Mantha slapper. He stays in the game, but that looked painful. Uh, and then Anderson, from a sharp angle, you can't have that. No. Uh, Kuzmenko with the assist at 17-28. And almost as good with this is that when Anderson scores this goal, he goes straight over to where there was a Jets fan sitting uh, rinkside. And, uh, and and kind of, you know, gloated a little bit. So it's a 2-2 tie. The Jets press for a response, but it's 2-2 after the second. Third period, early press by the Jets. And at 101, Sandberg scores from Pionk and Appleton. Uh, the Jets then press for another. They're kept to the outside. And then on the rush the other way, Calgary answers. Kadri scores from Kuzmenko at 419. So Kuzmenko with a couple of helpers tonight. And that ties the game at three. Flames press at six minutes. The emotions are coming up. A lot of punching and pushing and stuff like that. Uh, we get a press by the Flames with nine and a half minutes left. Then we get a power play for the Jets. That becomes a five on three for a minute and a half. Uh, Velarde couldn't bury one in close. That's killed off as well. But then the Jets go back to the power play. Uh, and at 16-16, Cole Perfetti scores from Niederreiter and Nemesnikov. Uh, Winnipeg now has the same problem Vegas used to have which is so many long last names. Uh, so the goalie pull happens because now Winnipeg's up 4-3, to three, and Appleton hits the empty net from Niederreiter and Lowry at 18:46. Winnipeg wins 5-3. to three. They go to 8-0 and oh to start the season. 
Calgary 5-2-1 and one with the loss. Uh, your three stars are Connor, Zeri, and Ehlers. Now, was it intentionally so it would read Connor Zeri? Because if so, well done. Uh, shots on net, 16-6 to six Winnipeg in the first, 12-4 Calgary in the second, 15-11 Winnipeg in the third. Final shots are 35-29 to 29 for the Jets. Power plays, the Jets 2 for 4, Calgary 0 for 4. The hits, 31-18 to 18 Calgary. Comrie saves 26 out of 29. Wolf saves 30 out of 34. But it had a playoff feel to it, that game. All right, next up, Florida and the Islanders. The Islanders had a great start. And then, nope. So, Knight versus Varlamov, there's an early press by Florida, but Chalowski scores from Zizekas at 132 on a point shot pass to screen. It's one nothing Islanders. Pollock to Barzell, there's a near miss. The Panthers press at three and a half minutes, but at 6.01, Paul Mary buries a loose puck at the net from Pollock. And I was already thinking, like, could they go to Bobrovsky? Because maybe Knight doesn't quite have it tonight. Uh, so the Panthers press to respond. We get a power play for Florida. That's killed off. And then Brock Nelson buries a rebound to make it 3 nothing Islanders. Uh, that one from Siplikov and Palmieri at 11:41. But it's Florida, and they would answer. At 13:25. Reinhardt wires one on a fast break. Uh, Lou Sterinen and Lindell with the assist. So it's 3-1 to one Islanders after the first period. And again, I was kind of thinking maybe they'll go to Bob. Nope, didn't need it. Uh, second period, Nelson's tonight on a rush. The Islanders press at four and a half minutes. The shots are two to one Florida, five minutes in. And at 8.38, Kachuk scores from Verhage and Kulikov. Uh, the Panthers then look to tie it. The Islanders are having turnover issues at this point in the game. Confidence issues too, I think. So there's a power play for the Islanders. That's killed off. The Panthers rush when it's done. Panthers press with six minutes left. Nelson's denied on a fast break as Knight starts getting his game together. And then Samuskevich, if you're going to score your first NHL goal, do it on a wraparound via an end-to-end -end rush because that's going to be on every highlight reel for the rest of this season and probably beyond. So Samuskevich with one of the nicest first NHL goals you're going to see. Uh, Kulikov and Knight with the assist at 1816. Panthers then press for the lead. All the confidence, all the momentum's with the Panthers as we're going to the third with the score tied at three. Uh, Siplikov's denied and close. The Panthers press at four and a half minutes. The shots are actually five to three for the Islanders, five and a half minutes in. But at 619, it takes a Panthers bounce. Uh, goes off, I think it was Bennett's arm and then Varlamov's arm. But Bennett gets the goal from Kachuk and Mikola. And suddenly the Panthers have the lead. Um, we get a power play for the Islanders. Big key moment. That's killed off. Then we get a power play for the Panthers, and they score on it. Kachuk scores from Adam Boquist and Lundell at 9.49. The Panthers are in complete control of this game. The shots don't tell the whole story in this one. Uh, with 4.11 left, the Islanders get a power play. Becomes a 6-on-4. And it's an empty net shorthanded goal for Gustav Forsling at 17.43. And then the Panthers finish the kill. And they finish the Islanders. They win 6-3 in this one. They go to 6-3-1 with the win. The Islanders 3-3-2 three, three, with the loss. Your three stars are Kachuk, Lundell, and Paul Mary. Shots on net 9-8 New Jersey in the first, 7 apiece in the second, 13-12 Florida in the third. Both teams 28 shots in this game. Power plays Florida 1-2, for two, the Islanders 0-3, for three, the hits 23-20 for the Islanders. Knight saves 25 out of 28, Varlamov saves 22 out of 27. All right, next up, uh, Columbus and Nashville. This was a fun one. Very fun game. Uh, Tarasov versus Wedgwood. Good early forechecking by the Preds, but they're, the lone shot on net is by Columbus three and a half minutes in. We get a press by Nashville five minutes in. Columbus is blocking the path to the net. In fact, eight minutes in, it's still no shots for Nashville. Just two for Columbus, but they're keeping Nashville from the net at that point. It doesn't stay that way. Uh, Novak's denied when the Preds finally start getting shots. Columbus presses with nine and a half minutes left. And for Nashville, it wasn't just Columbus blocking the net. It was shot selection and just accuracy that was a problem for Nashville in that first period. But there's no score after one. Second period. We have two minutes of four on four to start. Nashville had the early jump. And then at 43 seconds, it becomes a four on three power play for Nashville. Uh, Preds called a timeout before it started. Stamkos has a shot that's held. That power play ends up being killed off. And Columbus opens the scoring. Marchenko wires one from the slot. Fantelli and Jack Johnson with the assists at 353. Uh, the shots are 4-1 to one Nashville at 5 minutes, meaning that was the first shot of the period. And then at 652, Aston Reese scores to make it 2-0 Columbus from Olivier. Then Columbus goes to the power play. This could go really, get really ugly. But 
<clears throat> at at uh, it becomes a minute and seven seconds of four on four. During the four on four, Nashville gets one. Uh, Forsberg wires one on a rush from O'Reilly at 10:40, and then the power play on the other end gets killed off. So everything's technically killed off, but that's a four on four goal during all of this uh, crossover. Um, there's a press by the Panth or by the Preds, I should say, with seven and a half minutes left. I knew I was going to say Panthers. I knew it. I was trying not to. We get a power play for Columbus. That's killed off. Teams exchange rushes. Columbus with some pressure with a minute and a half left. It's two to one Columbus after two periods of play. Third period, there's an early press by Nashville, and they score. At 26 seconds, Cole Smith goes five hole from the slot. McCarron with the assist on that. Nashville presses for the lead, but at 3.07, Columbus gets the lead back. Wierenski puts one past the screen from the right circle. LeBanc and Corrali with the assists, so Columbus is ahead. Uh, Nashville presses to respond, and at 4.09, they get it. Carrier scores from LaRue. That is the first NHL point for former first-rounder LaRue for the Nashville Predators. Uh, Sillinger's then robbed as Columbus presses. There's more pressure by Columbus with three minutes left. Monaghan's denied from the slot. We're going to overtime. Uh, Wedgwood is tested first. He ends up holding on there. Preds win the next faceoff. They set up. Columbus takes over. There's a changeover and all that fun stuff. Uh, just turnovers galore. Eventually, Nashville gets a goal. Marsha so from Shea at 144, and Nashville wins 4-3 to three in overtime. So, that's the third straight victory for Nashville. They're digging their way out of this mess. They're 3-5 and five now. Columbus 3-3-1 three, three and one with the overtime loss. Three stars in this, Marcia So, Carrier, and the aforementioned LaRue with his first NHL point. Shots on net, 8-6 Columbus in the first, 14-10 Nashville in the second, 11-9 Nashville in the third, and 2-1 Nashville in the overtime, including the shot that matters. Final shots, 33-28 for the Predators. Power plays, both teams go 0-2. Uh, the hits, 39-25 Nashville. Tarasov saves 29 out of 33. Wedgwood saves 25 out of 28. But entertaining game? Absolutely. Speaking of which, uh, Chicago and Dallas became far more entertaining than I kind of wanted it to be. So this one, it's Mrazek versus Ottinger. Early jump for Dallas. We get a power play for the Stars. Uh, there's chances on that power play, but the Hawks do kill that off. Uh, the Hawks then get a power play. That becomes 4-on-4. Four four. Uh, Sagan hits a post during the 4-on-4 four four play. Everything gets killed off. And then on a breakaway, Dodonov scores. Where'd that come from? It's Dodonov from Lindell at 9-17. Stars look for another. They get some pressure with two and a half minutes left. But they're up 1-0 after the first, and it felt like, yeah, Dallas is playing really well. This should be a relatively stress-free game. But it's, it's Dallas. That's not how it works. Second period, the Hawks start with a full power play. There's a shorthanded rush by Blackwell. That chance is held. Uh, and then the Stars finish the kill. So a good penalty kill to start the period. Uh, Dallas presses at four minutes. The Hawks go back to the power play. There's a post for Bertuzzi. Rebounds cleared. That power play is killed off. Stars press at eight and a half minutes. Eventually, they do get one. At 14.42, Ben bats one out of the air and close. Haskin and Harley with the assists. So after two periods of play, it's 2-0 for Dallas. Not the most exciting game, but they're up 2-0. So as a Dallas fan, eh, fine. Third period. Uh, ben to Johnston near miss. The shots are only one apiece five minutes into the period. There wasn't a whole lot to write about. Uh, pushy on a hold by Mrazek. So a little bit of pushing and shoving out there. Not a lot of that tonight, though. Uh, Stars press at six minutes. We then get a power play for Dallas, and they score on it. Uh, Duchesne from Haskin and then Stankoven at 8.50. And it looked like that was an insurance goal. They're up 3-0. There's only 11 minutes left. They're not going to blow a three-goal lead. So, and that was with one second left in the power play. Duchesne gets that too. So good timing. Uh, the Hawks press for response and they get it. At 9.34, it's, it's Donato from Craig Smith and Maroon. Uh, it's a loose puck that gets pushed in eventually. There was no challenge for goalie interference, and it, it wouldn't have come back if they challenged it. Stars press with six and a half minutes left, but at 14-15, Bedard scores. you got to watch for that kid. He's pretty darn good. Uh, Maroon and Allen with the assists there. So Pat Maroon with a couple of assists tonight. Uh, the Hawks look to tie it. The goalie pull happens with 155 left. Uh, the Stars ice the puck with 131 left. There's some tension, because of course there is. And then Duchesne hits the empty net to remove said tension. At 1946, uh, the assist on that one to Tyler Sagan. So your final score on this one's four to two for Dallas. They go to seven and two to start the year. Chicago drops to two six and one with the loss. Sorry, I was going to sneeze and I didn't think people wanted me to sneeze into the microphone. So yeah, two six and one for Chicago with the loss. The three stars in this one: Duchesne, Haskinen, and Ben. 
Uh, shots on net, 15-8 Dallas in the first, 10-6 Dallas in the second, and then 10-5 Chicago in the third. Final shots are 30-24 to for the Stars. Power plays Chicago 0 for 3, Dallas 1 for 3. The hits, 29-9 for Chicago. So Dallas not big hitters tonight. Mrazek saves 26 out of 29, and Jake Ottinger saved 22 out of 24. Now he needs to change boards for a last time. Speaking of uh, never taking things easy, the Canucks at home against Pittsburgh. These are always nail biters somehow. So Nadelkovich versus Lankinen. They had a nice ceremony before the game for Tyler Myers' 1,000th game. Congratulations to him for that. Uh, there's an early press by the Canucks. Uh, bunting as a wrister that's held. There's some pushing. Canucks come out of that with a power play. Bunting goes to the box. Uh, there's a shorthanded break for O'Connor. He's denied there. That power play's killed off. Shots are 4-1 to one for the Penguins at 5 minutes. The Canucks then have a 3-on-1 that misfires. And then Pittsburgh opens the scoring. It's Beauvillier, who loves playing against Vancouver. Uh, scored for Nashville in the last playoffs, too. Uh, Patterson and Malkin with the assists at 7-48. Uh, Penguins then get a power play shortly thereafter as Myers goes to the box. Uh, that was killed off and cleared. No shots on net for Pittsburgh there. Shots are 7-2, to two, though, for the Penguins with 8 minutes left. The Canucks press with 4.5 minutes left. Uh, there's a post for Garland. The Penguins clear the rebound. 3.37 left. The Canucks get a power play. It's a four-minute power play. That leads to a shorthanded two-on-one, and O'Connor fires wide. So O'Connor had opportunities shorthanded uh, in both cases in that first period. So that power play rolls over into the second period. Pittsburgh ahead 1-0. The Penguins uh, do finish the kill, and then they get some pressure. Canucks get pinned down a bit, and then Rust buries a wraparound from Beauvillier and, Ma and Malkin at 156. So Evgeny Malkin with two helpers early in this one. Uh, but at 406, Pedersen scores. Yes, he did. Garland and Myers with the assists. It's posting in after a turnover, and maybe that'll get him going. Uh, at 449, Sherwood then scores. He buries a cross-ice cross -ice pass on a two-on-one. Uh, Bluger and Dayarnay with the assists. And then at 5 minutes and 11 seconds, Miller scores from Besser on a net drive. So that is the fourth fastest three goals that the Canucks have scored in a game. Just insane. Uh, Canucks press at 6.5 minutes. There's some JT Miller chance. And then at 9.58, Baines gets his first NHL goal. He scores it on a net or he's, He buries a rebound on a rush. And Daniel Sprong had the assist there. Uh, Penguins call a timeout. Probably the right call there. Uh, the Penguins press with two and a half minutes left. Heinen to Sherwood. There's a near miss there. It is four to two for Vancouver after two periods of play. Third period, Brandstrom has a rush chance that's held. I, I like Brandstrom. I'm glad he's in the lineup for the Canucks. I thought he had a good game. Uh, Rust gets hurt. He had no weight. He couldn't put any weight on his right leg. He did exit. Um, and he got tangled up with Hoaglander. I, I just saw it as kind of a collision, but you guys can let me know your thoughts. Hopefully Rust's okay. Uh, DeBrusque had been benched at this point, too. He had missed a few turns. Um, so, not sure what exactly it was that caused the benching. Shots are 5 nothing Vancouver, 5 minutes in. Uh, the Penguins press at 9 minutes. Remember, too, if a guy gets benched, it could be that, that they're injured. There's just some reason they're not out there playing. Uh, so, we have a power play for the Penguins. That's killed off, but not long after. At 13-21, Malkin buries one on a fast break. Raquel and Grizzlick with the assists. Uh, the Penguins press to tie it. They get the goalie out, but the Canucks hang on. They win 4-3. to three. They go to 4-1-2. and two. I think that's four wins in a row for Vancouver. Uh, Pittsburgh drops to 3-6-1 and one on the season. Uh, your three stars are Baines, because his first NHL goal, Malkin, and Lankinen. Some key saves from Lankinen there in that third period. Shots on net, 12-7 Vancouver in the first, 16-5 Vancouver in the second, 11-6 Pittsburgh in the third. Final shots, 34-23 to 23 for Vancouver. Power plays, Pittsburgh 0-2, for 2, Vancouver 0-3. for 3. The hits, 24-16 to 16 for Vancouver. Nadelkovich saves 30 out of 34. Lankinen saves 20 out of 23. All right, San Jose and Vegas. This is, this is just brutal. Like, this is one of those games that right from the beginning, I was like, I don't know how ugly this is going to get. I'm kind of surprised it didn't end up being a no mercy game. So it's Vanacek versus Samsonov, or Samsonov, either way. Uh, Vegas presses and they score. At 157, Pearson uh, scores from Carlson and Holtz. This was the first shift of the season for William Carlson, and he gets an assist, wasting no time. Uh, Vegas presses at three and a half minutes, and they score. Uh, Eichel from Stone and Petrangelo at 347. He roofs it from the left circle. That was the fifth, fifth shot on net. San Jose had none. In fact, the shots are 8 nothing at six minutes. And then I just went... 
I'm, I don't know how many more notes I want to take because I anticipated a lot more Vegas goals and we would eventually get some. Uh, the shots are 18 to 3 with five minutes left. So, yeah, Vanacek was kind of left hung out to dry. And at 1646, Howden on a cross ice pass, buries one on a rush, Hurdle and Dorofiev with the assists. Uh, San Jose still had three shots to that point, and Vegas had three goals. Uh, with 49.7 seconds left, Sharks get a power play, so that rolls over to the second period with Vegas ahead 3-0. Uh, Vegas finishes the kill, only one shot in total for San Jose on the power play. Vegas goes back to controlling the game. Uh, there's a press by Vegas at three minutes. Wallman then has a shot that's kicked aside. Stone's denied on a rush. We get a power play for Vegas. That's killed off. Shots are 5-4 to four for San Jose at eight minutes. The Sharks press at nine minutes. Eventually, they score. Granlin gets one from Eklund and Ferraro at 10-11. He just jams it in during a press. And I think that's four straight goals for San Jose scored by Granlin. Uh, we get a power play for San Jose, which leads to a shorthanded goal. It's William Carlson. He catches Vanacek completely out of the net. Um, yeah, Vanacek was nowhere near where he should have been, and so Carlson puts it in. One of the easier goals he's going to get. Petrangelo with the assist at 11-10. Um, and then it becomes four on four. Everything gets killed off. There were three shots on the Vegas power play on the other end of it. Uh, Vegas then draws a power play. That's killed off. Sharks press with a minute and a half left. But with 124 left, Vegas goes back to the power play. So the Sharks offensive zone penalty. And then Dorofeyev scores on the power play from Theodore and Stone at 1926. However, not long after Nico Sturm scores for San Jose at 1941 to make it 5 to 2 in favor of Vegas. Third period, the shots are 2-0 Sharks at 3.5 minutes. Vegas presses at 4.5 minutes. The team's trade rushes. There were no shots for Vegas 9 minutes into the period. Um, and I was like, well, they have a 3-goal lead, so they don't really need any. But at 11-10, uh, Stone scores from Eichel and Barbashev. He puts that one past the screen, and it deflects in. No chance for Vanacek. Uh, and then Vegas looks for another. But at 13-30, Cunning buries a rebound in close. Zetterlin with the assist. Makes it 6-3. to three. Uh, At 17.07, Vegas gets the four-goal lead back. Howden scores from Dorofiev and Hurdle on a tic-tac-toe play. Makes the score 7-3, to three, which is your final, and thus the 80s magnet. I didn't have the 80s magnet earlier today for the Minnesota Philly game, I guess because I was trying to get that done before this one. It happens. Uh, your three stars in this game are Howden, Carlson, and Stone for Vegas, who go 5-2-1, and one, and for San Jose, they're 0-7-2. Yep. I'm one game away from having to do a, vi a, a video on San Jose's losing streak. Shots on that, 22-4 to four Vegas in the first, 15-11 to 11 Vegas in the second, and then they just take their foot off the gas. Uh, in the third, the shots are 12-5 San Jose. Final shots, 42-27 to 27 for Vegas. Power plays, San Jose 0 for 2, Vegas 1 for 4. The hits, 34-16 to 16 for San Jose. Vanacek, 35 saves on 42 shots. Samsonov, 24 saves on 27 shots. And so overall... Uh, exciting game, probably a little bit less exciting if you're a fan of San Jose, but it's not an unexpected result. All right, and last game of the night, Carolina and Seattle. So Seattle finishes out their, their homestand 2-2-1, and one. now they go out on the road. Carolina, much, much, much happier with a West Coast swing uh, this time around, and that West Coast swing ends on Monday in Vancouver. So it's Anderson versus Decord. The Kraken had the early edge, but there's a power play for the Canes, and they score on it. At 425, Svechnikov scores from Natchez and Jarvis. The Kraken then look to respond. The Canes, though, go back to the power play. Aho has a screenshot that's held. Power play's killed off. Three shots on net for Carolina's power play. Uh, shots are 7-2 to two for Carolina, eight minutes in. Not much room for the Kraken at, at many points during this game. And shot attempts were really high for Carolina, as usual. And shot attempts against them, not anywhere near as high. Uh, crack and draw power play, that's killed off. Then there's a near miss for Jared McCann after it ends. It's 1-0 Carolina after the first. Second period, the crack and draw power play, that was killed off with just the one shot on net. Shots are 3-0 Seattle at 5.5 minutes. Jarvis has a shot that's blocked as the Canes get some pressure. Uh, the Kraken get pinned down at uh, 7 minutes. Uh, and with 9 minutes in, somehow the Canes still only have one shot. So Seattle's doing a good job of protecting the net. Uh, the shot attempts halfway through the game, 40-15 to 15 for the Canes. And the Canes ended up with over 90 shot attempts in this game. Uh, the Canes then draw power play. That's killed off. There's some momentum for Carolina in the second half. 
Svechnikov fires one wide on a rush. The Kraken press with four minutes left, but at 16.49, Drury scores from Blake, makes it 2 nothing. With 2.56 left, the Canes get a power play. It's a four-minute power play. Uh, Aho has a tip shot that's held, and coming out of that second period, it's still 2 nothing. but there's still some power play to kill off for Seattle to start the third, which is exactly what they do. In those four minutes, six shots by Carolina. Uh, Kane's press at a minute and a half. Burns has a shot that's held. Kraken press, but again, they're not finding an easy path to the net. We get a power play for Seattle. Montour fires one wide. That power play is killed off. The Canes press at eight minutes, but Seattle would break the goose egg. McCann scores from Beneers at 10-21, gets the crowd into it, and then the Kraken are looking to tie it. Tolvanen's denied on a rush. We then get a power play for the Canes. That's killed off. And then Jarvis was cheating, and it worked. Uh, he ends up getting a, a breakaway. He scores from Martinook and Slavin at 15-37. He goes forehand, backhand, and roofs it. Yeah, good luck for Joey Decord on that one. Svechnikov then misses an open net in close as the Canes are pressing for another. The goalie pull happens with 2.25 left, and at 18-24, Orlov hits the empty net. Your final score in this one is 4-1 for Carolina. They go to 5-2 on the season. Uh, for Seattle, they're 4-4-1. Four, four, like I said, there's a lot of teams at 4-4-1 four, four, right now. Three stars, Decord, Drury, and McCann. Shots on net favored Carolina the whole way, 14-5 in the first, 15-7 in the second, 10-7 in the third. Final shots, 39-19 for Carolina. Power plays, the Canes 1-6, for six, Seattle 0-3. Oh the hits 25-13 for Seattle. Anderson saves 18 out of 19. Decord saves 35 out of 38. So there you go. You guys are caught up on what happened tonight. As I said, next up is power rankings. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts regarding tonight's game in the comment games in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.